fine. It's interesting. And I was like, I want to do something. I want to go back to our roots. I want to shoot something that's difficult. I want to get out of this pandemic mindset, the safety mindset. Let's go shoot Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Egypt. So we did Zimbabwe first. Awesome. Lovely people. Then we landed in Egypt. As soon as we landed there, um, the airport is a mess. So I have a drone. I have a drone because we're flying with the drone. I didn't leave from home. I know you can't have a drone there already, but it was like a two-hour process for them to go between 12 different people and have me give my drone to, to somebody who would put it in a locker. Fine. It's like 1 a.m. We're getting to our hotel. Finally, we're going to get some rest, and then we have the next day to do a little scouting before we start shooting. Now, you know you're not in the best place if your hotel has as much security as an airport. So we pull up at this hotel and they are like, you need to scan the bags. I'm like, no, nah, no, thanks. Don't worry about that. They're like, yeah, we're scanning all the bags in, in big giant scanners outside the hotel. So every time you walk into this hotel, it's like you're going through airport security. Is or that may- all hotels in Egypt? Not, it's the expensive ones. And so we were in a decent hotel. Are you in Cairo? Yeah, in Cairo. And so they scan our bag. They see a bunch of wires inside because we have all of our chargers and they open the bag, and then this is where the shit hit the fan. So they open it up. The first thing they see is four walkie-talkies. So it turns out walkie-talkies are illegal to have in Egypt. For me, I couldn't understand this. It's like, but I have WhatsApp, I have the internet, I have Messenger. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is there's been two revolutions in in the last 11 years. The government can turn off the internet. They can't turn off your walkie-talkies. And so they're scared of journalists, and they're scared of, of... more uprisings in the future. And so the, the, the police, the government, everyone there is very, very controlling. And so for the next six hours, from about 2 a.m. to 10 a.m., my team had to sit outside the hotel in the cold, and we were questioned nonstop about why are you here, why do you have this gear, all these questions. Meanwhile, we said we have, we're going to have a permit. It's we're we're getting it tomorrow. Can you just show them your YouTube channel and your bandana? Oh my god, <laughs> the bandana, the bandana <laughs> would have sold it. So, I mean, like, look, it's me. <clears throat> this guy. Oh my god. And the night, the night manager of this hotel. I I hope to one day find him and choke him out. This guy was had no business questioning us, and he said, "Well, you all four travel together, right? So it's two camera guys and my producer Liz, and myself." And he's, he's saying, well, show me all your passports in a country that you've been to and all the dates need to line up in every country. And it's like, it, even if we all met today for the first time, what we're doing still isn't illegal. And we showed him the channel, everything. I said, I'm here to review food. I, I don't, I'm not doing anything else. We'll have our permit tomorrow. In the end, they took all of our cameras. They took some of our lights. They took our, uh, some hard drives. And they, the police kept it. And the police said, hey, don't worry about this. It's not a big deal. Show us a permit tomorrow. We'll give it back. It's like, all right, frustrating, exhausting, go to sleep. The next day, we got the permit. I go to the airport. We spent about four hours, five hours there. They won't give it back. Um, what are Egypt, they saying? Egypt is a country of bu- uh, uh, intense bureaucracy, layers and layers of people, people and people who don't want to stick their neck out for anybody else and they who don't want to make decisions. And at least that was my experience there. And so... Um, it took maybe two or three hours just to get access to customs. When we finally got, I mean, we had to go. It was just, it seems all so pointless. It's like government jobs created so people have something to do. We spent tw- uh, an hour just to make a name badge that said we had permission to be in customs just for, you know, that one day. A, a plastic badge with my face on it. Cool. Super efficient. So then we get in there and they said, no, you, you can take this gear when you leave the country. That's when you can have it back, when you leave the country. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They have all my stuff. And so at this point, we go, you know, we have one option left, which is that we can shoot on this. We have the iPhone. I can go buy another iPhone. And we still had some microphones that they didn't take and, uh, and lights. <laughs> it's amazing. They took my lights, right? I just went to the store and bought more lights. I don't know what the point of taking my lights was. So it seems like everything's going to be okay. In my head, I'm still stuck on this idea of like, I, I still want to make a positive series about Egypt. The people overall were friendly. Not the officials, but the people. The food's really interesting and delicious. The next day, halfway through shooting day one, the police stop us. It's always some guy in plain clothes. He whips out a wallet with a a, a dirty ID on it. Hey, I'm police. Come over here. Come bring the whole van. Bring everyone over here. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? We have our permit at this point. We have a permit. It has my picture on it. We have all the credentials that we're legally required to have. 
we go to the police station. In the meantime, I have a dummy phone. I've transferred some of the footage onto an extra phone so that I don't, uh, so if he asks me to delete something, I'll delete the dummy footage. And exactly that happens. The police officer says, sorry, you have to delete all this stuff. What does he want you to delete? Yeah, great <clears throat> question. F food. So we went to a what? restaurant. We went to a restaurant. We shot food. And on the street, too, we shot some, uh, some bread that they were making on the streets. And that's it. And he just was like, these pictures aren't beautiful. This isn't good. Suddenly, this guy is like a, a documentary critic. And he's just saying, not okay. So he's acting okay. as like a spokesperson for the country, like for PR? Like he doesn't think that your footage is good enough? It's confusing to understand the motives sometimes, especially because we had a permit that said we had permission to, to shoot on the sidewalks and to do exactly what we were doing. And it's not like, you know, a lot of people watch my video talking about this and they're like, well, idiot, you can't just show up. Yeah, okay, we've been doing this for a while. We didn't just fucking show up. We, we had a plan. We had a fixer there. We had permits. We went through all this tedious process before even landing. And so with the permit, it, it's funny because I asked our fixer, I said, um, we have the permit. What's the permit doing? Uh, obviously, he's, he's telling me to delete the footage. What's the purpose of the permit? And he just goes, well, we're not in jail. We're not in jail. So it was a complete fucking debacle. So you could have been in jail. That's what, that's what he said. filming bad footage, what they considered not beautiful footage of food. Well, and if you look it up, there are people who they accused of being journalists who are in jail even now in Egypt. And maybe they're journalists, maybe they were um, tourists. It's hard to say. Uh, what's, what's confusing about Egypt is that they, it's not like I went to the Congo. This is a country that brands themselves as a tourist destination, right? Yes. We've got the pyramids. We have yeah. take a ride on the camels. There's all these incredible things you can do over. You can I want to go there. Yeah. Really? Just, I mean, make sure you have a, a good guide or someone with you. 25 journalists detained Egypt, third worst jailer of media workers globally. Whoa. What's interesting is so many YouTubers had similar experiences to me and they didn't talk about it. And I'm so happy that police officer talked to us on that day and made me delete that footage because it just flipped it for me. It's like I got punched in the face 10 times and now I'm ready to finally fight back after trying to be peaceful. And now I'm like, I'm just going to show everybody the reality of what it's like to shoot here. And um, when we posted the videos, of course, there's a little bit of concern like, am I going to get hanged? Is there going to be backlash? We got thousands and thousands of comments of people talking about their awful experiences that they had while in Egypt. Just regular tourists. Regular tourists. Regular people. People who maybe they had a GoPro or they're really anti-camera. They're